Blessings, beloved. Jesus is the way and the truth and the life, and no man comes to the Father but through him. Okay. So, today I um, woke up and was on the Facebook feed and a whole lot of lies about the Bible were put in my shopping basket so to speak so I'm just going to turf them back out it's important that we uh, confute and disprove things that are said about our God lies so the first thing I would say to you is before you go to somebody else's book club read the book for yourself the bible says let god be true and every man a liar amen so i was on a page today and the page was aptly named morgue the morgue is a place that dead people go to and they don't go there to find life so if we look at this, um, there are many lies been put out there about Yahweh, Adonai Elohim, the God of the Bible. And they're saying that, oh, whilst we can um, recognize the Bible as being a book of that has some wisdom and some good stories and things, it's not the inerrant word of God. And so there are many misrepresentations of the word of God in order to incite people to violence and anger against Christians who believe the Bible to be the inerrant word of God. So the claim is that society should be built upon logic and reason and not uh, belief. The assumption and the assertion there is that belief um, and, and logic are not the same thing and can't be the same thing. When of course they can be. Your belief can be based on logic and reason your belief can be based on what you have seen and observed so to to assert that um, society should be run on logic and reason I, I agree with that absolutely however what I don't agree with is that logic and reason is opposed to the Holy Bible nor am I expected to nor must I and that's why we have uh, freedom of religion, freedom of belief, freedom of opinion. And so when somebody comes along and they say, you know what? Yahweh is a vicious God that um, killed firstborns and um, had people uh, sacrificed and etc. etc. Well, this is what you've got to know about Yahweh and about any uh, good judge. He must receive payment for the crime committed in full. Now, the Bible says that God will work all things for the good of those who love him. Okay? So if somebody sets themselves up as an enemy against your kingdom which is perfectly peaceful and has never committed a crime against anyone as a just and, ju and a judge how should you react the kingdom of heaven came under attack came under violence because lucifer said he would set up a throne higher than yahweh's Lucifer was a created angel, beautiful and perfect in his ways for a time. And what happened? He, he decided he was going to set up his own throne. He corrupted his wisdom for the sake of his splendor and he fell away and he deceived Eve. He told her that she shall not surely die if she partake of the food, of the fruit, of the tree of the knowledge of good and evil and Eve is dead so he lied to her 
because he is the father of lies. And he caused one third of the angels of heaven to fall with him. Because he is a convincing liar. Now, Satan was cast out of heaven. He couldn't win. Yahweh is all powerful. He threw him and his angels out of heaven. As a just judge should. Because he attacked heaven. Unprovoked, he attacked heaven. And so he was judged justly. That's it. Now, knowing that Satan was then now in the earth, inciting harm against God's creatures, he's still doing that today. Now it's in the form of high-reaching arguments against the Bible, high-reaching arguments against Christians, and it's what what's the function of it to encourage conflict and that's what the enemy does the enemy is the one inciting a breach of the peace because he's opposed to peace because the absence of peace is the presence of him So what he has to do then is he has to tell you that the one bringing the peace is the one jeopardizing it. Whilst he tells you at the same time that if you're the one bringing the peace, that harm may befall you for trying to bring the peace. Not only that, but he's encouraging people to be angry with Christians for bringing the peace. At the same time, he's arresting Christians for being the ones who are inciting a breach of the peace. Whilst he, whilst he encourages those who serve him to... What? Arrest, imprison, beat? Those who are simply bringing the gospel. And answering questions. And exposing the unfruitful works of darkness. All of the things that a Christian is supposed to be doing in a Christian society. Now, as more and more of these uh, demonically based, and they're, they're clearly demonic. I mean, it's clearly rebellion against the Bible. So that in and of itself exposes an agenda. I mean, it's no accident that they're opposed to the Bible. It's no accident that they're opposed to Yahweh. They didn't just happen upon the Bible and then happen to pick up against the Bible. No, no, no. They're, they're operatives. They're agents sent to attack the Bible in its truth and set up false doc doctrines of devils. Because they know they can't remove the Bible because the Bible will reach the sheep. So what they're trying to do is they're trying to, and they're going about it, encourage many people to fall away, to follow Satan. And to deceive many into believing even, excuse me, that Satan is God. When he's not the most high God. And then they'll say that Yahweh was, wasn't justified in his judgments on upon the earth. They'll talk about something on the face of it. Oh, something happened this, something happened that, this, that, this. But what you have to remember is God always forewarns. And when people persist in their sin, he brings judgment because that's his job. To judge the wicked. You wouldn't expect any less from a just and good judge to protect his children from evil. So these constructs like homophobia and all of this stuff, a phobia is an irrational fear. 
um, Christians will not be inciting violence against those who are engaging in same-sex relationships. No true Christian will be doing that. We're coming into the world to bring the gospel of peace. We're coming into the world to tell people that they can be saved. Romans 10, 9 says that if you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him from the dead, you shall be saved. For it is with the heart that one believes and is justified and it is with the mouth that one confesses and is saved. Now, doubt it not that God is a man of war, and that he will not be defeated in the end. And that those who continue in evil and refuse to put their faith in him will be judged. But God does not delight in this. It is God's perfect will that none perish. But people have free will and they, they will and have chosen to follow Satan. But I encourage you to follow Jesus. Because he is love and peace. And this world is going to start you know stirring it up churning it up churning it out this bilious bilge that says the bible is a is a book of hate and that yahweh is a god of hate and all of these things and follow us follow what we say follow this follow that satan's better he lets you do whatever you want well there needs to be order and rules in order for there to be peace and there needs to be order and rules in order in order for people to have um, to experience um, the invariant attributes of God the, and be beneficiaries of his eternal attributes which are altogether lovely and God must protect his, his children who are willing to follow him uh, against and from his children who want to do violence to them so there has to be a separation then and that's what we're seeing but Satan is violent so he will come against the saints with violence but at the same time, he'll tell you, oh, this is totally acceptable because, um, yeah, they're, they're the ones bringing the violence. Well, who have they hurt? It's the one bringing the physical violence in a way that is totally unjustified who is doing the harm. It's like oh over you know all these wars were fought in the name of Christianity not by true Christianity you see this is the problem the Catholic Church is not true Christianity and they didn't represent the Bible rightly they didn't even obey the commands of the Bible call no man father holy father let God be true and every man a liar oh this the Pope's un infallible there's no mediator between God and men but the man Christ Jesus oh confess your sins to your priest pray to Mary Make no statues nor bow down to them. Oh, look at the saints and Mary and even Jesus. They tried to present an image of Jesus. How dare they? The exact representation, of the image of God is Jesus. And they want to do up a statue a thousand years later when they don't even know what he looked like. Well, who's this image of then? Heaven or hell is spoken about in the Bible. They, they present purgatory as though it's a, a place you can go, like a sin bin. You go for a little while until you get out and then you're grand and you go to heaven then. No, eternal damnation awaits the one who dies in their sin without repentance and faith in Jesus. Eternal hell. So the Catholic Church never represented the, the commands of the Bible. They, they used to embark upon and partake of uh, pagan traditions. You've been tricked, deceived, and the Catholic Church has served as a smear campaign and all of its hidden orders, and all of the orders that brought it about, the Knights Templar, the Jesuits, they're the ones who warred against true Christians. But they want to, <laughs> they want to say that that was Christianity warring against others. So now they blame Christianity for the actions of their fake Christianity. There's a there's a, a multiple uh, multifaceted weapon with multiple uses at different angles in different time spaces. It's being refashioned and reformed and pointed at at those 
who would bring the true representation of the Bible. Why? Because it suits the agenda. Why? Because they want to encourage sinful behavior and encourage a spiritual takeover, an evil spiritual takeover of society. Enter offense. The spirit of offense has nothing to do with Christianity or the Holy Spirit. The spirit of offense. I'm offended by that. Well, offended by somebody telling you that what you're doing is potentially harmful to you and ultimately harmful to you if you don't repent of it. That is not hate speech by any measure. So you say you want to discard what has been known and proven to be moral, the moral framework of society that has worked. You want to discard that and say that what you have in its place is logic and reason? How is that possible? How is it logical and reasonable to tell somebody that when they expose the, the unfruitful works of dar darkness and the harmful effects of sin, that they're then working illogically and unreasonably? That's the premise. That's the inference. How then? How, how then can you build a logical and reasonable society upon that which is immoral? Because all logical and reasonable lines lead to morality, good morality. Otherwise you abandon logic and reason, you don't support it. So this is a, like a mass exodus from logic and reason, not um, building upon it. You can't build a house on the, on, on the sand and expect it to stand and weather the storm. You see how they're, taught, they're, how they're renaming things, redefining nonsense as logic and reason? How they're renaming um, unscientific, unfounded um, premises which haven't been empirically uh, evidenced as science they're asserting them as science trust the science trust the science no there's they're saying trust the science all right but the knowledge is witchcraft that's what they're talking about they're saying trust the witchcraft they're saying believe in satan trust in man believe in man the wisdom of man to do evil the cleverness of man to do evil witchcraft wisecraft trust in the knowledge the not evil knowledge Trust the science. Whereas the Christians are saying, trust in God. So, but he's a, he's a warmongering God. It even says it in the Bible. He's a man of war. Yes. Have you read this in context? Should men continue to suffer violence? Indefinitely? Before they defend? Only after, only after the death of the flesh is not the destruction of their soul. And this was afforded to us when Jesus died on the cross, when he paid for all sin and washed us clean. Now the death of our flesh is the freedom of our spirit. To live as Christ, to die as gain. To live as Christ means to live is to serve God and his kingdom. To die as gain. It's to rest from our labours. Because we're at war in the spirit. But we're renewed every morning to do that work. Even as our body ages. For your benefit. And for the benefit of the church, for the benefit of those who would follow King Jesus. So you see, everything that they throw out is dependent upon your ignorance of the Bible. 
So translation after translation after translation, you can't trust it. Well, if you can't trust the Almighty God to present his inerrant word, then why would you believe the word when you read it? Even if you read it. But I'm saying to you, why would you go to book club with someone who calls their page the morgue and throws hexes all throughout a, a bilious uh, speech against Yahweh, his creator, when you haven't even read the book he's purporting to have insight into. Greater insight than even theologians and Christians themselves. This is surely nonsense. And these are the individuals who are driving the mob the violent mob against the Christian. To battle, to your battlements. We're the ones on logic and reason. We're the ones on science. We're the ones keeping the peace. Well, what's with all the spears then? What's with, what's with all the arrest and the physical attack and the shouting? How is that peace? We want peace with you. We want peace with all. God loves a peacemaker. God alone is the one who dispenses his just judgment. And we're not qualified because we're not all knowing. We're not qualified to tell him whether he was right or wrong. We should trust that he is right. because he knows all things. How can a finite being with a three pound brain tell God he's wrong? You see, this depends upon you being given to the spirits they're operating in rather than reading the word of God to show thyself approved, rather than studying the word of God to read it in context. So if you're more inclined towards jumping on the bandwagon, yay, let's hunt down the Christians, then that's perhaps what you'll do. But if you want to truly have an understanding and a, and a, an insight into what is what occurred in the Bible and what is meant by God being a man of war, you will read the Bible. Because God is long suffering and warns people to repent. Praise his name. Glory to King Jesus. Hallelujah. Glory to Yahweh. He is the God of peace. And he is the just judge. So repent and put your faith in him. Romans 10 9 says, If you confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and believe in your heart that God raised him excuse me, from the dead, you shall be saved. For it is with the heart that one believes and is justified. And it is with the mouth that one confesses and is saved blessings beloved a holy kiss read the bible for yourself excuse me read it for yourself the holy bible and seek the lord and he will lead you to the truth in his word imagine going to book club without having read the book saying yeah yeah, let's yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's attack the believers of this book. Let's do that. Yeah. We're the peaceful ones. 
Yeah, we haven't even read the book in context. But we're the peaceful ones. Yeah, where's the spears at? And the pitchforks? Yeah, reason and logic. Trust the science. Who's read this? Blessings.